Hi there, I'm Joshua Finn from j and Aerospace. Today, we're talking about what you need to take with you to an indoor contest to have a successful time. Now, if you're going to your local indoor meet, you can kind of get away with maybe forgetting a thing or two at home. On the other hand, you travel halfway across the country because you've heard there's big indoor meet and you would like to go fly at it. You need to make sure you have the things with you that are going to ensure that when something goes wrong through the weekend that you're able to address it instead of having your flying session basically end because oh I forgot X tool. So we're gonna start with model box. That's the first thing you need to have is your airplanes need to be stored in some sort of container that allows you to get them to and from the contest safely and that means that it needs to be of a convenient size, it needs to be uh, built so that it can handle whatever type of travel rigors you're going to deal with, and needs to be thought out in a way that allows you to easily get the airplanes in and out of the box, and to ensure that the airplanes don't get damaged in the box. Now there are a lot of ways to do that, and depending on how many airplanes you have, you may not need something particularly complex. We have used, uh, for example, uh, foam board boxes, which are very popular for simple airplanes, down to this type of a device, which is set up for uh, slightly more advanced indoor models. Uh, with a few attachments, though, you can have a box that is set up for FAI-style airplanes. So in this case, we have a propeller rack, we have our fuselages on sliders, we have the wings behind that, we have the stabs up front, and in general everything is set up in a way that ensures that you get to the contest, your airplanes are self-contained in here, and you're able to basically address whatever has to be addressed. So this box was built with the thought in mind of I'm going to take airplanes to Romania halfway around the world and I need to be able to address any problem that can possibly arise on site. So that should give you some thoughts on model boxes. We'll come back to what's in there in a little bit. So the next thing that you should consider is uh, typically on your, if you have a model box of this, of this style, you'll notice both of these have torque meters mounted on the top of them. Winding rig is, is part of that, so we have a, a device for the winder to slot into so that you can load and unload from there. And everything is uh, able to be part of a, a self-contained unit. Now you'll notice there are no tools stored in either of these boxes. And that's very important. You don't want your tools in the box where they can get loose and damage your airplanes. Next thing that you need to bring with you, this is the thing that ends your party, if you forget it, is rubber. I have, other than that, that's some loose stuff. I have rubber cataloged by size and batch throughout here. In some cases, yeah, here we go. So here we have 6.5 inch long 0.4 gram motors made from uh, June 2016 Tan Super Sport. And there are some number of them in there, partial and full motors. And we could go throughout this box or bag. I have more of them. This bag lives in my freezer, and that's very important. This bo bag, when it is, um, whenever it comes out of the freezer, other th it, it, it comes out for very limited pur purposes, and it only stays out during those purposes. So this bo bag comes out for me to cut and assemble rubber motors to put in here, and then it goes back in the freezer. Then on contest day, I get this out of the freezer, I put it in a known spot in the car where as soon as I get out of the car, it's going to come out of the car with me. This never stays in the car while I leave the car other than, you know, like at a gas station or whatever, because this has to be kept in a temperature controlled environment. 
if you get this hot or expose it to excess, excessive uh, direct sunlight, what's in here gets deteriorated. And we're uh, particularly when you're flying uh, competitively, this the, the contents of this is going to have to last you in some cases the next 20 years. There's rubber in here that is May 1999, so that's 23 years old as of the recording of this video. Um, obviously, in keeping with that, bring rubber lube to the contest with you. This is Armorall. We'll talk about some other rubber lubricants um, as, as time goes on. Uh, another thing that uh, may come in handy, I highly recommend, have a model stand of some sort. And we'll talk about some other alternatives on these in a minute. But the bottom line is uh, model stands allow you to get the airplane positioned up off the table. Uh, and that accomplishes several things. One is the airplane's not sitting on the table where it can get damaged. It's not sitting there where it's resting its own weight on itself. So it's up here mounted by a hard point on the airplane. And that also means now if I line up a couple of model stands here, my airplanes are up high and now I have work area underneath them. Table space is always at a premium when you're flying at an indoor meet. Now, this is my tool case. If you can't tell, it's heavy. And that's because I bring everything but the kitchen sink. If I had space, I'd pack it too. So, this is, this is probably overkill. But, this is what I have. So, I have various types of pliers. I have, um, there we go, round nose. Um, standard, if we can get them out of here, standard needle nose. I have wire cutter, uh, sorry, that's um, side cuts. Those are used for cutting some specific materials. Can't use them for wire though. These are shear cutters for steel wire. I have a sharpening honing stick for my rubber stripper and anything else that needs to be sharpened. I have pens. Behind here, I have the single most important thing that you need to have when you go to your contest, and that is, flip to some pages that are useful, this is where the data lives. You take this to the contest, you have data that you record at the contest, any data that you have had the opportunity to record prior, and now you don't have to guess, uh, what size rubber did I need for this airplane? Or what did I use for last flight even? It's all written down. In keeping with that, take a couple of pens with you because one is going to fail. Or a pencil, or whatever. Um, some other things that are in here. This is uh, dissolved 3M Super 77. Let's see, I'm missing one because, oh, that's because it broke a while back and so I need to get another one. This is acetone. Currently, because that the other container was broken, I have Instaset CA Accelerator. I have my CA Accelerator, uh, my CA up here. Also, um, if you can take it with you, this is regular model airplane cement. Um, I do have a probably mostly unusable tube of Duco here. That's what I used to take. I have my rubber lubricant. This is Dow Corning 33, now Molly Coat 33. Um, it's the same stuff. Uh, I have a balsa stripper that I take with me. Uh, you don't necessarily have to have a balsa stripper, but recommended. I have several, several stopwatches. Um, Obviously, you need your winder. Spare torque meter. Ends for model stands and the posts for them. Um, this is, oh, this is an important one. A C-clamp. So, if you're, if you're using your model box, for example, to wind on, you may run into the issue of it sliding off the table or whatever. Have a C-clamp, and that will prevent that. This is my rubber stripper. This is a very nice rubber stripper. Those of you who are familiar with the Johnson strippers 
know that um, they are very, very expensive. I did not pay full price for mine. So, in keeping with that, if you are a mortal who can't afford the expensive equipment, we do have, for example, an alternative. It's not as user-friendly and you have to get creative with how you tune it, but less expensive rubber stripper. Um, I do have some other random things that we'll talk about in here that I think are useful to the average flyer. So, that's some Kevlar I was given. This is a dial caliper. This is very useful for measuring the thickness of wood and the thickness of um, rubber when you're stripping it. I do have a milligram scale in here and that provides me the ability to weigh anything that needs to be weighed. Um, this is a laser range finder and inclinometer. Why uh, you need that, that's very useful for dealing with measuring the height of your airplane and of the ceiling so you can make calculations based on that. Uh, I do have a cautery for cutting film. Notice we had the um, adhesive up there for it. And somewhere in here I have a, here we go, I have a bag of loose covering right here. And that is used for patching broken airplanes. I also forgot to actually have this, that's kind of sad, have a bunch of spare bearings and propeller shafts. I have another box in here that has even more of those. So there again, um, probably overkill for any normal human being. Um, oh, by the way, I should mention scissors too. Kind of an important thing to have. Let me close her back down. One last thing that is of importance to mention is you need a retrieval pole of some sort. Do not depend on somebody else to have that equipment unless you have some sort of prearranged agreement. Uh, but pretty quickly you need to get your own steering pole because if you're planning on going anywhere uh, far, far away, you need to have your own equipment or any local flying that you might be doing alone. Now. For high ceiling sites, you need to have a balloon rig, and there is information in Indoor News and Views about how to set up a balloon rig, um, so we're not really going to get into that here. Uh, since most of you are flying low ceiling, this is what you're going to need to have, but for high ceiling, have a balloon rig or make arrangements to have one reserved for you at the site, and you'll need to pay into the so-called helium club to pay for your share of helium in that case. So I hope that has provided a good overview of how to set up to be successful at your first indoor contest. And if you have any questions or comments, put them down below. If there's something you think I've missed, please mention it down below. We'll pin it so people can see it. Um, or we'll put it in the comment section, or sorry, in the uh, information section below the video or whatever as, as people mention that. So, we'll see you. Hi, I'm Josh Finn. This is Hope. We are J&H Aerospace. If you like this video, hit the like button. Also, how about subscribe to our channel and check out jhaerospace.com for new free flight products and all of the tooling that you'll need to build them. Thanks for watching.